Hello Astrofam and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rux, I'm a Western Tropical Astrologer and today we're going to be talking about the full moon lunar eclipse coming up on the 5th of May in Scorpio. Those of you who have in your natal chart planets or angles around 14-15 degrees of fixed signs, you folks are likely to feel this eclipse the most. Why? Because the eclipse is happening at 14 degrees 57 minutes of Scorpio. This is an eclipse that activates the south node. Therefore, we can expect a big release. Um, Judith Hill um, generally describes uh, eclipses that happen with the south node as astrological events indicating a big power outage. So we can expect a purge, we can expect a release, um, we can also obviously expect a culminating point, a culminating moment, because we are, after all, talking about a full moon lunar eclipse. So things are peaking, they're culminating, they're coming to a close. So I would recommend kind of like picturing this, uh, this eclipse as a time in your life when something both reaches a peak, but also a time in your life when something is being released, an energy exits your um, body or um, your uh, relationship or your career uh, or whatever sector the eclipse is going to activate for you in your own natal chart. Now, of course, we are going to go through the updates for each of the 12 zodiac signs and you have probably heard me say this many, many, many times. Um, please, please, please do listen to the update for your rising sign because this type of general update is created with the rising sign in mind. Now, before I get ahead of myself and dive right into the astrology of, uh, of the eclipse, I want to remind folks or maybe to, to share with those of you who are here for the very first time, a few things about me. Um, I work with a whole sign house system. So those of you who use a different house system, that is completely and totally up to you. That's absolutely fine. But please keep in mind that I, uh, I use the whole sign house system. Those of you who want to work with me, the bulk of my work is one-to-one -one consultations with clients. You can find me on my website, which is written in the stars astrology.com. That is written in the stars astrology.com. So you can go straight to my website, to the services section. And if you are a first time client, you can go straight to the one hour, 15 minutes uh, live Zoom consultation option. If you're an existing client, uh, you have a few additional services to choose from. You can choose a 30 minutes follow up or a year ahead forecast. Um, all of these happen live on Zoom. And of course, if you would like me to, uh, we can also record the session so that you can re-listen to it as many times as you would um, as you would like. Now, if you are a first time client, uh, maybe it is worth sharing um, what type of services I offer within the one hour, 15 minutes um, consultation. Of course, time permitting because um, one hour, uh, 15 minutes is, is not three days. Um, in our first session together, we can analyze your natal chart. If you have not um, had the natal chart analyzed before by an astrologer, we can look into the year ahead um, for you to better understand uh, what types of themes you're dealing with, what uh, major life chapter you are you're in, how you can make the most of opportunities, but also be best or better prepared for uh, potential upcoming challenges. Um, we can also look into your astrocartography, so how your natal chart gets triggered, gets activated by various places around um, the world. Uh, we can look into compatibility if you would like to understand more about the relationship dynamic between you and uh, you and a partner, a romantic partner, a business partner, or maybe even um, you and a parent, for uh, for instance. You can choose one or several of these services um, when we get together for the one hour live Zoom consultation option. And generally, after you make a purchase on my website, um, obviously you have to contact me through the contact form. Um, I would uh, recommend flagging 
what it is that you would like us to prioritize within our session. And of course, as an existing client further down the line, you can uh, definitely purchase uh, follow up consultations. We can dive into additional topics of interest and so on. The one hour, 15 minutes um, live Zoom consultation is completely, completely customizable to your needs. I know that there are so many people out there who are now studying astrology. So for instance, if you would like to um, get uh, an astrologer like myself um, with over a decade of experience to help you maybe better understand uh, your natal chart, to help you maybe better understand how you can utilize the, uh, the, the potential in your, in your chart. We can certainly also do um, that. So written in the stars-astrology.com, that is where you can find me. At the time when I'm filming this, which is right at the end of April, um, I'm filming this on the 30th of April. By the way, Mercury is still retrograde when I'm filming this, so please be kind and gentle. <laughs> if I happen to make any mistakes, I'm not saying that I will, but if I do make any mistake or if I have like a, a slip of the tongue, as they say, <sighs> please, yes, remember that Mercury is retrograde and uh, uh, we, we we have to uh, give, uh, give each other... Uh, a little bit of extra grace when it comes to um, when it comes to communications and messages and understanding each other. So uh, making sure that we are all on the same page. So right now, when I'm filming this on the 30th of April, I am taking bookings for June from the 9th, 10th of June onwards. I am fully booked up until that um, up until that point. I generally book like a, a month and a half roughly in um, in, in in advance and uh, because of that I do um, every now and then uh, close my books because uh, I I don't want to be booked like five months in advance um, and uh, then if anything happens at short notice uh, for, for you or for me um, we, we can't move things around. So I did want to share that technical detail from the very, very get-go. By the way, for those of you who are um, not here for the first time, my, my Astro family, uh, you might be wondering what on earth is going on with this like weird background behind, uh, behind Rux. And I do apologize also if there is a little bit of echo and if the, the light changes uh, throughout the video. So I am currently on vacation with my uh, with my husband in um, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Dubrovnik in Croatia. It is such a magical place. And if there are any Game of Thrones fans watching, oh my God, you're going to love this place. Um, a big part of Game of Thrones, from what I understand, was filmed here. Um, King's Landing is is like here in Dubrovnik. I mean, obviously, the location for King's Landing in, in, in Game of Thrones. So basically, uh, we are now on vacation and uh, I am taking this uh, this moment <laughs> to film this this update for you uh, because I do want you to uh, get the update in uh, in time so that you are prepared as much as possible for the upcoming eclipse. But alas, I had to find the perfect like angle for the light for, I don't know, for you to see me properly. I am sitting on the, I'm sitting on the floor. <laughs> so again, if you're wondering what on earth is up with the, with the background, I mean, if you don't like it, folks, please, uh, please just ignore it and listen to, to the messages um, about the uh, about the eclipse. I know this was a very long chat and uh, I hope no one got bored in the meantime, but sometimes I do feel like having a chat. Maybe it's because of Mercury retrograde because I generally jump sooner rather than later to the point. So let's come back to the full moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio on the 5th of May. So big power outage around around this time, a big release, uh, a big uh, culminating point, a big culminating moment. Um, they also say that uh, at lunar eclipses, someone or something can be eclipsed out of our life, can be uh, removed from our life. Because the eclipses are obviously connected with the nodes, the nodal axis, if something does get removed from your life or if a person exits your life, I would almost see it as a sign. 
sorry to be very woo woo here, I would almost see it as destiny telling you that that particular person, relationship, energy, job was no longer serving you. And it was actually taking you away from your, um, your path of growth from a destiny and um, evolutionary perspective. I would also see it as that particular element of your life having played its part. And now it is time to let go and move on so that you can build potentially in a new direction so that you can welcome new, fresh energy. Of course, it's going to be a very emotional eclipse. 100 300%. Why? Because we are talking about an eclipse happening in Scorpio, and we know that Scorpio is fixed water in, in astrology. It is a fixed water sign. There is tremendous attachment to emotions with, with Scorpio, um, which kind of like makes it even more challenging to release whatever needs to be, um, whatever needs to be released, um, from an emotional perspective. Um, I would recommend, so of course we're going to talk about the update for all 12 zodiac signs, but I would recommend before we do that, that you have a think about what was going on in your life. What were you dealing with? What types of pe what type of people um, you, you were dealing with? What type of experiences you had? What type of issues came to your attention? Last year in 2022, um, from the last week of August until roughly the middle of September, why? Because that is when the transiting nodal axis was reaching the degree of the eclipse that is happening now in May. So whatever was started last year, end of August until roughly the middle of September, whatever came to your attention, even if initially it did not necessarily seem that important, that consequential, etc., etc., you might actually now look back and say, oh, wow, that was definitely important to that meeting, that uh, aha moment, um, that um, maybe emotionally turbulent time. It was very, very relevant. <laughs> uh, things are coming full circle, you could, uh, you could say. Um, I would also recommend looking back at the solar eclipse uh, that took place on the 25th of October last year, 2022, also week before week after, because that's when we experienced a solar eclipse in Scorpio, um, a new moon solar eclipse in Scorpio. So you could also say that six months later, we are reaping the rewards. We are reaping what we have sown. Um, six months ago, obviously, in October, at the time of the solar eclipse. This eclipse, 5th of May, and you might already feel it a week before and definitely a week after, um, puts the spotlight on power dynamics. We are talking about Scorpio here. Scorpio is a sign that is very, very interested in power, um, managing, handling, accessing power. Uh, Scorpio accesses power by... I was about to say hoarding. <laughs> it is a fixed sign, and and there is a ho hoarder tendency to all fixed signs, but but in in, in different ways. Uh, Robert Zoller says that um, um, fixed Earth Taurus hoards objects and material things. Um, fixed um, Air Aquarius hoards knowledge. Um, fixed um, Fire Leo hoards honors and glory. I love that. I love that. <laughs> And uh, fixed water. Uh, there can be obviously a hoarding tendency when it comes to uh, when it comes to emotions. Um, so Scorpio grabs power by accessing buried information, by accessing buried insights, by keeping things to themselves. Secrets have power. Um, what we don't necessarily share with others can have power over them, it can also hold power over us. They say that when we share a burden of an emotional nature, when we talk about trauma, when we talk about challenging experiences, um, that no longer has power over us. It no longer has a hold on, um, on us. So this eclipse puts the spotlight on power dynamics, um, the distribution of power very, very likely, um, the stock market, <sighs> I gotta say, we are in for some major, major, major fluctuations. Generally, May is um, a month of fluctuations, if you ask me, from, from a stock market perspective. 
second half of May, we are going to have um, Jupiter in a tense aspect to Pluto. We're going to have Mars in a tense aspect to Pluto. And Pluto also has a uh, certain connection, a certain correspondence with, with the stock market. So this eclipse may shake things up on, on the stock market radically, I, 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 I want to say. Uh, hidden information, buried, uh, buried information may, of course, come to the surface, and that may have an impact on uh, both the distribution of power and on the value that is ascribed to um, companies, stocks, etc., 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 Let's see, let's see, let's, let's see. Uh, this eclipse is also likely to put the spotlight on behind the scenes politics and buried kind of like undercurrents impacting the economy, resources, food, um, as well as the relationship between our psyche and our physical um, bodies. Remember that Scorpio is also a sign that has a certain affinity to um, sexuality. Are we likely to see some sex scandals? In the news, yep, probably, 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 probably. Um, let's think a little bit about the Scorpio archetype. Um, Stephen Arroyo um, associates Scorpio with the shaman, but also the psychologist, the detective, the spy, or the seducer. Are we likely to... See maybe in the news or around us even instances where those who act as shamans, psychologists, therapists, detectives, or maybe even spies, are we likely to see people who act in this capacity coming to the forefront of our attention and kind of like things being about them at the time of this eclipse? Yes, very, 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 very likely. A lot of a lot of transformation, a lot of death and rebirth, of course. Uh, a peak in transformation at the time of this eclipse. Um, Scorpio sees, in general, is it's a sign that sees past the facades and the appearances uh, that we put up. There's nowhere to hide with Scorpio. And a lot of people may feel like there is nowhere to hide at the time of this eclipse, especially especially from an emotional perspective. Um, it can be a very healing time in a way because it may feel like what has held its tight kind of like claw upon us is now being released. Sometimes that can be done forcefully. So we may feel pushed by circumstances to release buried emotions and to kind of like bring things out into the open that we have kept for ourselves. And we may be aware of the fact that that is likely to completely alter some of our relationships and some of the dynamics that we have with people in our, in our life. It can be a time of crisis. It can be a time of hidden kind of like obsessions coming to the surface. It's also a time of purging. You know, I, I, I always like um, think of the scorpionic energy as kind of like bubbling up, boiling under the surface and building up. And it's building and it's building and it's building. And at one point it blows up and it explodes. But that makes room for... The big regeneration, it can also have a very positive impact, the blow up. Because if things did not blow up, then nothing would actually change in a situation where change is necessary. Breathe at the time of this eclipse, folks. I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say it. Um, Tempers are going to run high. Emotions are going to run high. We might feel like we're dragged into the currents of powerful, overwhelming emotions. And maybe 
maybe there's some value to allowing ourselves get dragged there. Or maybe that's just part of the process to put us back in touch with our tremendous power that we might have forgotten. Sometimes we forget how powerful we are, how strong we are, how capable of, of change and action and transformation we are until life pushes us, until it pushes us till the very, very end. And that's, as they say, that's when we see what we're made of. Is it pretty? No. Can it be constructive and immensely beneficial in the long run? Pfft. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, I do like a few things about this eclipse. Mars, which is the uh, ruler of the eclipse. Mars is going to be in Cancer, another water sign. Mars doesn't like to be in Cancer. Let's, let's just face it. Um, we are likely to fight for family, for family values. We are likely to fight against the demons of the past. We are likely to maybe find innovative solutions uh, to um, overcoming the demons of the past, demons connected with how we were brought up, demons connected with the family, demons connected with family history, demons connected with our home country and our uh, and our culture. Uh, why do I believe that we're likely to find some innovative solutions? Because Mars is going to sextile Uranus and Taurus. So Uranus, as we know, likes a bit of a disruption of the status quo, and sometimes disruption is absolutely necessary. Um, Mars in a nice aspect to Uranus tells us that we are probably going to find original ways to act and to stand up and to defend and to assert ourselves um, in the face of buried, but, be but very, very powerful um, demons that may have messed up our internal life, I'd say. Mars is also going to try Neptune and Pisces. I see here action being taken to save something and to heal something and to forgive something, I'd say. Mars is going to square, however, Jupiter and Aries. So do I see the possibility of exacerbated fights, of, of kind of like ever-growing fights, of extensive, expansive fights uh, um, connected with our beliefs and connected with kind of like differences in culture. Yes, I do see kind of like clashes between people who don't belong to the same culture and everyone's kind of like fighting for their culture, their history, their home country, um, their belief system. Mercury is still retrograde at the time of this eclipse, so I don't believe that these are um, new fights that are, that we are seeing culminating around this time. No, if anything, I see them having been around for, for a very, very long time. And they can be fights over land and they can be fights over resources and food. Uh, and they can also be fights over um, different ways of, of kind of like approaching, uh, like approaching the, the topic of history. Um, I know someone said, they commented on one of my old videos. Uh, history is history and facts are facts. Um, yes, fact, facts are facts. Yes. The interpretation of history, however, is, um, as we very well know, dependent upon the perspective that we uh, utilize when, when looking back, when looking back at it. That doesn't take away the facts, but... We as humans, we ascribe meaning to the facts. And it's the meaning that we ascribe to the facts that actually creates our history. And ideally, yes, yes, if we were to live in an ideal world, which we absolutely do not, so let's not kid ourselves, history would be objective. Is history 100% objective? No. Why? Because it's written by humans. Are humans 100% objective? Never, never. We are subjective and biased uh, as, as much as we, as much as we uh, do our best to be as, as objective as possible. This eclipse is going to be seen from Europe, Asia, Australia, Africa, um, the Pacific, the Atlantic, and the Indian Ocean, and from Antarctica. Um, in mundane astrology, they do say that the path of the eclipse tells us what regions in the world are going to feel at a, at a collective level um, the impact of the eclipse the most. I mean, this is most of the world, isn't it? Um, here in Europe, well, 
I'm laughing. <laughs> Um, and uh, I'm, I'm laughing sarcastically in case uh, people are wondering why I'm laughing. Um, sarcasm is, uh, is very much welcome here on my channel and sometimes I have to flag that because sometimes people take things very, very literally and they don't get sarcasm. So here in Europe, I was about to say, geographically speaking, um, right after the eclipse on, on the 6th of May, please don't shoot the messenger if I got the date wrong, King Charles is going to be officially crowned right after the eclipse during a Mercury retrograde. Is that going to go exactly to plan? Probably not. Probably not. Are we maybe going to see how it doesn't go exactly to plan? I don't know. I mean, that depends. That, that depends. Um, we do know that the media can report or not report on certain things. Just as, just as an FYI. Um, this eclipse is part of Sato's series 141. Um, the first eclipse that was part of this series um, took place in 1608. So the year 1608 on the 25th of August. Um, the last eclipse part of the series is going to happen in 2888. So we've got a, a good few hundred years. A few hundred years. Oh, well. It's almost like I said yards, a good few hundred years to go until this Sato series is over. Um, why is it important that this eclipse is part of this particular Sato series? So when two eclipses are separated by a period of one Saros, which is 18 years, uh, 11 days and eight hours, they share a very similar geometry. Um, they occur at the same lunar node with the moon at nearly the same distance from Earth and at the same time of the year. So. Um, they are geometrically very, very similar. The meaning of each Sato series is determined by the aspects that were present at the first solar eclipse. Uh, my apologies, at the first lunar eclipse that was part of the series. Um, this is like the, the natal chart of the Sato series of eclipses. Um, over the lifespan of each Sato series, and this particular Sato series is going to be over 800 years from now, roughly. Um, so over the lifespan of each Sato series, the planetary meaning inerrant at its beginning is carried through each eclipse in that series. Um, just as we carry our state, our static natal chart through our entire life. Now, the first eclipse uh, that took place uh, as part of this Sato series in 1608, 25th of August, um, was a uh, lunar eclipse in, in, in Pisces, and it happened with Jupiter and Taurus, like... Um, Jupiter is going to go into Taurus this year after after the eclipse. The eclipse uh, formed a harmonious aspect to Pluto in Taurus, but a tense aspect to Uranus in Gemini. Now, what happened? What happened in 1608? Because I had to Google significant historical events happening that year around the time of the eclipse. So a day before uh, the eclipse happened, on the 24th of August, the first English convoy landed at Surat, India. So the first representative on the 24th of August, 1608, the first representative of the East India Company landed in Surat for purposes of trade. The East India Company um, was a British joint stock company founded in the 1600s to carry out trades with the East Indies, a term used to refer to South and Southeast Asia. The East India Company came to India as traders. So listen to this, folks. History is so interesting. Um, the East India Company came to India as traders, but they eventually gained control over large areas of the country by using their private army. The rest, of, the rest is history. So are we likely to see at the time of this particular eclipse in May fights and uh, maybe significant um, battles being won over land and resources? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Now, enough with the, with the history. Let's come back to the present day. <laughs> uh, let's dive into the updates for each of the 12 zodiac signs. Uh, folks, remember to listen to the update for your rising sign. I know I'm, I sometimes sound like a broken record, but it is important. It is important if you want to make the most of this particular update. Um, all 
signs can expect um, the spotlight being placed on secrets, buried truths, um, a powerful emotional purge, uh, and revelations about uh, the nature of our passions and deep-rooted motivations. An investigation is likely to culminate around this time, and we are likely to leave no stones unturned. My dear Aries, Aries suns and Aries risings, what can you expect from this full moon lunar eclipse? 5th of May, week before week after, this eclipse is um, activating, activating your financial axis. So a culminating point connected with your money and finances, um, news connected with a mortgage, a loan. This could be a time when um, you receive um, news about whether you have been approved for a mortgage or, or a loan. Um, this could also be a time when... <sighs> It comes to your attention that you have to pay a significant amount of money to someone else. Um, if someone owes you a significant amount of money, you are likely to hear news connected with this. Obviously, look back uh, at 2022, um, last week of August until the middle of September and around the 25th of October, week before, week after. Um, have a think about what sort of uh, financial matters you are dealing with at the time. And this could give you a very strong indicator as to what you can expect from this particular um, eclipse. This eclipse is also likely if you've got partners, life partners or business partners, um, it's likely to put the spotlight on your partner's finances. You could reach a new agreement uh, or um, your partner could hear news connected with their salary, connect with their business. Uh, Mars is going to nicely aspect Uranus at the time of this eclipse. So I am seeing, I am seeing some, some, um, Innovative original solutions coming up connected with a mortgage, a loan, uh, or a significant expense, uh, either for you or for your partner. But it does seem like something that you have to like handle together, um, jointly and in some shape or form. And both of you might benefit from this. If you or a partner is expecting an inheritance or a lump sum of money, then it may very well be that you hear news of this around the time of this eclipse. Um, even if that does come as a result of, I don't know, like someone dissolving their, their estate or, or um, God forbid, someone passing, maybe someone ha has passed a while back and now you're hearing news connected with the inheritance or your partner is hearing news connected with that. It's probably going to be uh, auspicious news connected with, with the financial side of things, even though it may come to you as a result of maybe some 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 sort of like dissolution um on the, um, let's say, family's estate front, I, 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 I dare say. If you were looking to sell a property, you could also find a um, buyer around this, uh, around this time. Um, a big crisis is coming to a close, a financial crisis, and maybe something that has put a lot of stress over you and your family, my dear Aries. My dear Taurus, Taurus suns and Taurus risings, what can you expect from this full moon lunar eclipse on the 5th of May, active week before week after? A culminating point relationship-wise. So those of you who are in a relationship already, a romantic relationship, you are likely to take a relationship to the next level. Um, the partner could have some big news for, um, for, for, for you, um, some unexpected news, maybe news that changes the course of your life in some shape or form. Um, it, it may feel like you are stepping into a new life chapter altogether as a result of what's happening on the relationship front. So some of you could be taking a relationship to the next level. Some of you might decide to um, share with the outside world the news that you are um, in a committed relationship. Some of you could meet a, a very fated person, I, I want to I wanna say. Um, this can be a very beneficial time for those of you who are looking to sign um, a business partnership, I, I want to say. Maybe something that was postponed because Mercury is retrograde. So if the signing of a deal, of a contract was delayed, then it could happen around the time of this, uh, around the time of this eclipse. Um, I'm also seeing a time of celebration together with friends, um, when it comes to um, news that impact your relationship sector, my dear Torians. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be romantic relationships that we're talking about here. It can be business relationships. So I see a successful um, collaboration. I also see a sense of being very, very aligned with a partner, um, maybe unexpectedly so, uh, about what you want your future to, um, to look like. You can feel very emotional in relation to a partner and in relation to a partnership. And you could also feel in a way like you are excited about where a partnership is headed, even though 
this was something that maybe you had hoped would happen sooner, I, I, um, I want to say. Geminis. Gemini suns and Gemini risings. 5th of May, the full moon lunar eclipse activates your axis of work and service. Um, I, I dare say that some of you could leave a job behind around this time, or some of you could receive uh, news that you've been finally accepted for a job, you've received uh, the, uh, the offer, even though that didn't happen at the time when you were expecting it to happen. Maybe this does take you a little bit by surprise. Uh, there could be an unexpected sense of relief connected with your uh, work. Um, also an unexpected sense of relief connected with your health. Um, there could be, before the relief comes, there could be a little bit of a crisis health-wise, I want to I wanna say. But at the same time, it may feel like you know exactly what needs to be done in order to um, overcome the health-related crisis. It could cost you a little bit of money, um, but you seem to have the money, you seem to act very quickly, um, and as a result, as a result, um, you're feeling much better afterwards, and you're like, yes, tick, I've taken care of this health-related issue. Um, have a think about what was going on health-wise and work-wise. Last year, um, my dear Gemini's, uh, from the last week of August until the middle of September and around the 25th of October, because... Um, whatever was going on in these two sectors may come to a close, may come to a culminating point at the time of the eclipse. A colleague might uh, announce that they are resigning. A team member might announce that they are resigning. Um, also, your team could be restructured around this time work-wise, but you don't seem to be mad about it. On the contrary, if anything, it seems like there are some hidden perks for you if that is the case. Uh, you might even end up... Um, I want to say maybe making more money as a as a result of it. So it could very much work in your favor, even if even if let's say um, you're not excited because you will, will no longer be working with this person. Maybe you did get along quite well with uh, with them. My apologies if I sometimes breathe funnily. I do have a deviated septum. I know some people say, Rux, are you out of breath?" I'm like, "No, I just need a surgery for my nose." In case folks are wondering, also I know um, maybe sometimes it, it it looks like I'm I'm not looking at the camera or I'm I'm looking at like weird places. I am filming this on my phone and it's not the same as filming it on my um, regular camera. Uh, what I use to generally film stuff. So that is why maybe sometimes I'm don't come across as 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 looking at the right kind of like point at the right kind of like. Uh, dot on on the screen so going back to the 12 zodiac signs my dear cancerians my lovely cancerians brothers and sisters what can you expect from this eclipse full moon lunar eclipse a culminating point connected uh in, in your life connected with children um maybe something is peaking in your life uh, when it comes to children or pregnancy, my lovely Cancerians, you do seem to feel excited about how things are playing out. You do seem to feel excited about the future um, when it comes to children. Uh, some of you could hear news of pregnancy. Some of you could feel like you have overcome a crisis connected with, with children. Uh, some of you may feel like you have released a, a significant fear connected with, uh, with children. Those of you who have kids might also feel like their kids have overcome a very challenging time emotionally and it may feel like uh, that's making room for a new dynamic for a new um, also chapter in the life of their um, of their kids it could also be a time of great fun and celebration with uh, with children and a time of feeling really emotionally bound but in a good way with, with, with your kids, especially if you do have uh, children, my lovely Cancerians. Uh, some of you could fall in love around this time, those of you who are not yet in love. Um, and uh, it may also feel like you release a big um, fear or a big trauma or a big wound connected with, with love and you are making room for uh, a new chapter romantically around, um, around this time. I'm also liking the fact that this can be a time when you have a great deal of fun, um, either with friends or whilst traveling or both. There could also be some really positive news um, connected with your education coming up around this uh, around this time, and that could um, 
inspire you to celebrate the, the very, very good news. <sighs> My dear Leos, Leo suns and Leo risings, uh, this full moon lunar eclipse is activating your house of home and family um, sector. I do feel like some of you are going to leave behind a home around this time. I do feel like some of you um, might, might feel like you've overcome a crisis connected with home and family. Um, maybe something that has been weighing very heavily um, upon you. Uh, this could also be a time when someone moves out of your home, such as maybe a child or, um, I don't know, maybe like um, a, a roommate or someone uh, of that uh, of that sorts. If you were waiting to like buy a, a house and you were in the process of it and it was moving very, very slowly, then um, it may feel like you have accomplished what you set out to accomplish at the time of this full moon um, uh, lunar eclipse. You might also have something very significant to announce uh, to the world um, publicly connected with your home and um, and family uh, and family life. This could be a time when there is a possibility that you you might need to relocate or change your living situation or alter somehow your, your private life because of exciting electrifying developments that you're very happy about um career uh, career wise my um my dear leos uh, this could also be a time this could also be a time when you finally 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 even if you lost i don't know hope <laughs> uh this could be a time when um you hear very auspicious news connected with a bonus um i want to say career wise or um auspicious news connected with an inheritance of some sort or a gift maybe or a lump sum of money uh, maybe coming from the family towards um, towards you. Um, the eclipse, um, my apologies, Mars is going to be in a tense aspect to Jupiter at the time of this uh, at the time of this eclipse. Mm. Uh, you might need to travel at short notice or uh, alter your travel plans, I dare say. And if you do need to sign something of a legal nature, I would recommend going through it with a fine tooth comb and also being very prepared to maybe change your mode of operation and of taking action um, because of maybe having to adapt to different rules or possibly a different culture altogether, dear Leos. My dear Virgos, Virgo suns and Virgo risings, I think you're going to like this eclipse. I do think you're going to like it. I feel like you're taking an exam or like passing an exam around this time. You could be pa passing your, your driver's um, license test. Uh, you could also wrap up a um, writing project uh, or finalize a course. Um, it does feel like you are feeling, <laughs> forgive me, sometimes I need to learn new words. Uh, around the time of this eclipse, it may feel like you are excited about what the future holds and you're excited to take action in the direction of your goals for the future because you feel like you have completed something of an educational nature, I'd, uh, I'd say. If you were waiting for news connected with uh, visa, traveling, um, residency, foreign lands, foreign countries, stuff like that, uh, you're probably going to get the news around the around the time of this um around the time of this eclipse i do feel like you are looking forward to moving on with your life um this could also be a time when you say goodbye to a neighborhood and when you say maybe goodbye to an old car potentially or an old means of transportation this could also be a time when uh your siblings if you have siblings one of them announces you uh, of the fact that they plan to move across the country or they plan to make a very radical um change to their life you seem to be excited for them on, on on the one hand and maybe a little bit worried on the um on the other hand um you could also feel like around the time of this eclipse there's a sense of really being on the same page with a partner as to how to act in the direction of a common goal and a plan that you have got um together it could also feel like you discuss with a partner about something that was a very like sticky topic from an emotional perspective maybe a triggering topic and now that the air has been cleared very important conversations at the time of this uh eclipse my dear virgos now that the air has been cleared um the love is stronger, the bond is stronger, the connection is stronger with your um, with your partner. Mercury is still retrograde, and I don't believe you're having new conversations. I do believe you might be having old conversations around this time, um, Virgos. 
if you are agreeing to move forward with a partnership around this time, business or romantically, um, I would still, still, still hash out some of the details connected with shared assets and shared resources. So if you're planning, for instance, to buy a home together with someone or enter into business with someone, I would not be in a rush to get things kind of like signed before you are super, 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 super clear on what both parties expect from a joint assets or shared assets standpoint. That's my, that's, that's my advice. That's my recommendation. Libras, Libra suns and Libra risings. This full moon lunar eclipse is activating your financial axis. And this is the time for you to get paid by the looks of it. Uh, this could be a big, big payday. Um, this could also be a time when um, finally you're overcoming some sort of a financial crisis. Uh, maybe something that has been really negatively impacting your financial sector. This could be a time also when you release an expense or a series of expenses, when you uh, look at your budget and say, oh, wow, I wasn't aware of the fact that I spent so much on X, Y, Z. Therefore, I'm going to get rid of these expenses. So it's a it's a great time um, to maybe become aware of what has been sucking you dry financially and say, hmm, maybe I can act differently on this uh, on this front and I'm going to be in a much better, better uh, place fi financially. Um, you could hear news of a raise around this time. This could also be a time maybe when um, you release a source of income, but I don't see you being in a bad spot um, if you ask me, um, Libras. Maybe you're releasing a source of income so that you can make room for a much better source of, of income, I'd say. Look back at what was going on financially for you um, last year, last week of August in 2022 until the middle of September and around the 25th of October, because that could give you indicators as to what to expect financially at this point in, uh, at this point in time. Um, I do believe that if uh, you are letting go of a source of income, there is probably like a much better one to grab uh to grab on to this could also be a time when you release an old way of approaching your professional life and your career um path and you may become much more conscious of how you have been sabotaging yourselves uh libras maybe because you have not been valuing yourselves enough uh, professionally. And although that could come with some significant emotions, um, it could have like a powerful emotional impact. I would see it as a big win because once we realize how we have been getting in our own way, maybe how we haven't been asking for our worth, then we can now ask for our worth, right? Um, sorry, I have to move around. <laughs> Because as I flagged at the very beginning of this video, I'm sitting on the floor and sometimes it does get a little bit uncomfortable. My dear Scorpios, you are the stars of this eclipse. <sighs> Expect a sea, an ocean of emotions to overcome you. But you're you're used to them. You're used to them. Um, I, I, I don't believe this this is like a new thing for you. I would expect some emotions to like penetrate the very mysterious solid surface and persona that you um put out that you share with the world so some of the emotions might like bleh, <laughs> blow up and people might look at you and say wow that's that's a lot of that's a lot of feeling but that's not a bad thing. I mean, sometimes people do need to know how you feel about a certain situation. You can't just like hold, thing, hold things in, hold stuff in and ho hope for the best or like hope that people are as perceptive as you are because probably most of the times they are not. You could have a, a big aha moment at the time of this eclipse as to how you are shedding your skin like the snake, uh, how you are releasing an old sense of self, an old identity, how you are getting rid of the old you that is no longer relevant for the path that you are stepping on. Um, it may feel like the old you is dying, literally, at the time of this, uh, at the time of this eclipse. You might even feel some, some physical manifestations of the 
ocean of emotions that I see washing over you. So if you feel like you're feverish, if you feel like, I don't know, uh, your body is doing some weird stuff, you feel like you want to throw up or, or things like that, you feel like you, you're going through a purge, I would see it as an indicator, almost like a symbolic indicator of the fact that you are releasing the old you. You are releasing your old sense of, uh, of self. Uh, you're purging yourself of, of blocked feelings, of blocked emotions, of repressed, suppressed, or buried emotions that have been holding you back and that uh, are no longer relevant for your destiny and for where you are headed. I like the fact that Mars is nicely aspected to Uranus at the time of this eclipse. Uh, it does feel like someone is there to help you go through this purge on a personal level partner, a romantic partner, or an advisor, someone like a therapist, or like a counselor of some sorts, and they also put things into perspective. They help you see the meaning of it all, even if what you're going through maybe might feel a little bit unpleasant from a physical perspective, but it is a short thing. Um, you can count on your partner. You can also count at the time of this eclipse uh, on loved ones in uh, in general. Um, as I said, there could be there could be a little bit of a feeling of, of maybe like health wise not feeling 100% because it is a time to cleanse yourselves, my my dear Scorpios. That could interfere for like a day or so, uh, maybe a day or two with your work as well. So I would be a little bit flexible with with work, and I would give myself permission to excavate whatever needs to be excavated from the depths of of our insides and get rid of it, uh, Scorpios. A lot of love, a lot of love. You do have a lot of support and you do have a lot of love in your life. You're not alone. Remember that um, there could also be some big news connected with your physical body around this time. And some of them might involve the topic of children. So maybe some of you are possibly, 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 possibly either pregnant or hearing news of a pregnancy. Sagittarius, Sagittarius suns and Sagittarius risings. This uh, full moon lunar eclipse on the 5th of May is activating your 12th house, 6th house axis. Service uh, health uh, is, is very much in the spotlight for you, Sagittarians. I do feel like you are releasing, you're letting go of um, a trauma of some sorts and you are letting go of something that has been negatively impacting your, your mental health. This could also be a time when you release a job because you realize it's not worth, it's not worth, uh, the impact that it's making upon your mental health, the negative impact. It could be a time when you see your shadow very, very clearly or a part of your shadow very, very clearly. And now that you see it's there, it no longer has power over you. It no longer has a hold over you. Uh, this could be a time when you do feel potentially, potentially a little bit drained of energy. So you might want to rest. You might want to like take it slow, take it easy. It could also be a time when there are some unexpected news um, making their way to you connected with your, your work, maybe some restructurings at, uh, at work. Um, look back at what was going on work-wise and health-wise in your life, Sagittarius. Lost ear. Um, let's see last week of August until the middle of September in 2022 and around the 25th of October, because that could give you some indicators as to what to expect at the time of this, uh, at the time of this eclipse. This eclipse is saying, let go of this tendency to bottle up feelings, emotions, aspects of, of, of an emotional nature that you consider to be dark or negative or that you kind of like you don't want to integrate because you don't want to identify with maybe feelings and emotions such as jealousy for it for example or shame for uh for example um if we don't integrate the shadow then obviously the shadow has power over us so we might as well look at the darkness in the face and say okay what are you trying to say to me <laughs> um that's something that I would uh, that I would look at. Um, I do like that. You seem to be overcoming a sense of fear and dread connected with where your work is headed. I also feel like if you're resting around this time, it may uh, put into perspective what you want to do next work wise. So taking a little bit of a step back from from work might paradoxically help you realize what needs to be done next connected with your work. So that might be very, very useful, Sagittarians. 
Capricorns, Capricorn suns and Capricorn risings, especially Capricorn risings, I think you're going to be celebrating at the time of this eclipse. And I know some people are going to say, Rux, you're crazy. What are you talking about? But this full moon lunar eclipse is activating your 11th house, 5th house axis. So I feel like you're celebrating something um, like, a, like a big win with a group of people, um, a big win... Um, that deserves a celebration with 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 a group of people. Um, you could also um, find yourselves uh, Capricorns leaving an organization around this time, or leaving a community of people behind around this time. But at the same time, this does call for some sort of like celebration together. It does call for some sort of like. <sighs> I don't know, like partying of some sorts. Maybe you're leaving behind the job and you are going out for your like leaving drinks and everyone's like having a having a great time. And there can also be sparks in the air with someone romantically, I'd, I'd say. This could also be a time when you uh, say goodbye to a friend, maybe because they're, they're um, going away or maybe because they're getting married and moving to a different state or something like that. But again, I see the energy of celebration at the same time, Capricorn. So I like it. Um, those of you who were maybe trying to have kids, uh, you could receive some positive news around this time. Uh, I also feel like this is a time when you are um, letting go of an old set of goals, my dear Capricorns. Maybe because you have accomplished some of those uh, dreams and goals, maybe because you realize that some of them are no longer relevant, I'd uh, I'd say. Um, it could also feel like a time when you uh, sign up an important, um, maybe like contract with um a community of people or a group of people uh, to collaborate with on creative projects for uh, for the long run. Um, a big creative project seems to turn out beautifully at the time of this eclipse, I'd, uh, I'd say. One thing to keep in mind is that you could be overdoing it a little bit, a little bit with the celebration and maybe the parting and um, a family member could get frustrated or annoyed with you, maybe like a partner because you get home late and maybe because they feel not included or something like something like that. That is that is a that is a possibility. Um, it's almost like a. I want to say that at the time of this eclipse, Capricorns, uh, a weight is lifted off your chest because you seem to have reached a peak in terms of goals and plans in your in your life. Aquarius, Aquarius suns and Aquarius risings. Oh my God. <laughs> Aquarius Risings, I feel like you're walking away, you're leaving behind an old role, an old position uh, professionally. You could also be leaving behind an industry. There could also be some massive, massive, massive news coming up connected with your industry, um, connected maybe also with a company that you are a part of. And this seems to change your professional life um, significantly. There could be uh, radical kind of like changes connected with um, legislation, maybe radical changes in terms of like leadership. And as a result, you could look at your professional life and say, do I want to be a part of this? Yes or no? Maybe yes, maybe no. Uh, this could also be a time when you leave behind an important role that you played in society, not just professionally, but mostly professionally, uh, because there are some major developments happening at home so maybe you are uh, moving to a different country. Maybe you are growing your family. Um, there could be all sorts of things happening at home, but that may uh, involve you um, having to kind of like make a a hard, a tough choice and say goodbye to something that you have built professionally for quite some time. Um, if you are leaving behind an industry, I do feel like you're you're doing this because you're very, very excited about stepping in a new direction, maybe a direction work-wise that gives you more autonomy and independence. Um, if you're walking away from like a big, I don't know, like director's position, um, I don't necessarily see you stopping work, but maybe doing work moving forward in a different way, in a way that uh, gives you more, again, more autonomy, more freedom, the ability to like organize your time and your diary, however you see fit. I am seeing, hmm. I am seeing the possibility of some miscommunication uh, around this time, uh, my dear Aquarians, maybe with, with people in your work. So if you are kind of like doing a handover, I would make sure that you don't rush through it. Uh, and I would also, because you seem to be in a rush, <laughs> I would also make sure that um, you take into account maybe any sort of like differences in terms of like communicational like styles, because um, if you don't, then that could get in the way of you like 
quickly and rapidly wrapping up this particular chapter of your life. Look back at what was going on career-wise for you, my dear Aquarians, last year in 2022, um, last week of August until the middle of September and around the 25th of October, because that can tell you what sort of like peak and culminating moment you can expect at the time of this eclipse. Um, Pisces, Pisces suns and Pisces risings. I think you're going to like this eclipse. I think so. I think you're going to like it. Um, this eclipse is activating your axis of travel. You could uh, be traveling around this time or you could plan a big trip. You could also hear some very positive news overall connected with um, visas, residency, um, maybe um, foreign lands, foreign countries, maybe also some sort of a trial. You could experience like a big win trial wise. Maybe you are wrapping up, you are ending a trial or a legal process, a judicial um, matter. Um, I am liking the fact that um, there seems to be an unexpected solution or an unexpected win coming up or an unexpected piece of news that solves maybe an issue of a legal um, nature. I'm also seeing you r releasing at a symbolic level an old set of beliefs and an old life philosophy and uh, maybe spiritual view of the world. And that seems to be very soothing and healing. And it does seem to give you more confidence in yourself and more peace of mind. Um, you also seem to be releasing the emotions connected with this particular belief system, maybe more challenging emotions, emotions of like fear, shame, um, jealousy, and, and, and things like that. I, I like the fact that you're also feeling confident enough to talk about yourself and maybe to talk about things that you weren't com confident to talk about in the past at the time of this eclipse. Um, there could be an energy of overspending money at the time of this eclipse, maybe because you do want to celebrate the end of a legal process, of a judicial process, or of a process or like a, a journey connected with foreign lands and foreign countries. Um, I... Um, I want to say some of you could be graduating. So from an academic perspective, this could be like a, a big aha moment. And it does feel like, whew, I am so relieved that I am graduating, that I am wrapping up my academic, uh, my academic journey. A crisis of some sorts, maybe a crisis of faith of some sorts can also come to an end at this point in time, my dear Pisces. And it could feel like you are reconnecting with the divine, but in a new way, in a different way, I, 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 wanna, I wanna say the divine or maybe the mystical. This could also be a time when you say goodbye to some teachers in your life, Pisces, because you feel like, okay, they've done their job, they've played their part, but now I'm going in a new direction and I'm trusting my intuition, um, my psychic abilities, my connection with the mystical and the transcendental. It's a very interesting eclipse. Lots of crying, but it can be good crying. Lots of purifying uh, crying. <laughs> Folks, once again, thank you for tuning in. Um, if you want to work with me, you can find me on my website, which is writteninthestars-astrology.com. I am currently taking bookings for the month of June for one-to-one -one, uh, astrological uh, consultations for one-to-one -one readings. If you want to get more regular updates from me, and also maybe some updates about my life, you can find me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is at Rux Unbelievable in one word. That's Rux Unbelievable. And last but not least, if my content is useful, if my content helps you in any shape or form, you can also use the um, thanks button underneath the video to um, thank me. Uh, by by uh by making a uh donation let us know how the eclipse plays out and i will see you next time bye